This year marks the 175th anniversary of operations at the Inchicore Railway Works. From 1846, thousands of people have worked in this place, forming the life and soul of Inchicore. Unbeknownst to the casual passerby, the Inchicore Works is like a village in itself, covering 73 acres. Once through the gates, the place is still a hub of activity today, with workers maintaining and overhauling everything that runs along the tracks here. The works, as the railway complex is known, has always played a major role in Irish life and the nation's infrastructure. In the beginning, virtually everything that could be made for the railway was designed and made here. It's funny to think about it now, but in 1846, Inchicore was out in the country, about a mile and a half from the city centre. When plans were made for its construction, land was purchased from various owners and the first part of the line was opened four months after the establishment of Inchicore Works. In subsequent years, the population soared in Inchicore South, with the works employing 2,000 people, who were mostly housed in 147 houses, which make up the original squares and terraces outside the gates. I'm Paul Heenahan. I work in the running shed in Inchicore Works. I've been there since 1981. Started on my 17th birthday and have been there ever since. My father worked in the railway before that. I've actually lived on Abercorn Terrace all my life, which is probably one of the older, the older terraces that were built, built around 1850. The workers in the railway, they lived in the houses, but they paid a rent out of their wages every week. So they're the oldest houses in the, in the estate. And then gradually there was other houses built around the area. Living here, and living so close to the railway, you couldn't help but be influenced by the railway. Back then, when I was growing up as a kid in the, in the 70s and 80s, the road here at 5 o'clock in the evening, they had a hooter that went off here at 5 to 5 in the evening. And if you didn't get down the road before the, the next hooter, you wouldn't get out till 6 o'clock because it was just a stream of cars and bikes. I used to come out as a child and race the workers down on my little uh, three-wheeler. Didn't win many races, but uh, I gave them a good go for it. I think living here, uh, you appreciate how special and uh, I'm, I'm grateful every day for what the railway has given me. My father has, has reared a family here and now I've reared a family here, so only for the railway. It's, I wouldn't be here today. And I'd say every second house in the area back, back then had some connection, either directly or indirectly, with the railway. Either someone working there or someone that they knew working there. The works has witnessed big changes in society and technology, continually modernising to improve and keep up with the demands on it. Through the 50s, a new era in Irish trains were built in Inchicore, which ran on diesel, moving away from steam locomotives completely. Wheels haven't changed much though, still round, albeit manufactured in a different way. I'm James Maher, I'm a fitter and a team leader and a safety rep in the wheel shop in Inchicore. It was crazy when I started there at first because I came from a farm in Kilkenny and then it's up to this place in Dublin city like that you, you can't even find it and you come into it and it's like a whole other town in here. Like, and this is bigger than the town I'm from. from like. When I came into here, I came in, into here knowing very little about trains, uh, nothing to be honest. I was on them and that was about it. I always had an interest in engineering and that kind of uh, an environment. Well, in the workshop here in the wheel shop, we overhaul all the wheel sets, so axles, wheels, gearboxes break discs of all the different fleet types. Everything is stripped down and checked and like thoroughly gone over to make sure that everything is at a high standard at all times. Because you can't have trains breaking down, like it's the whole idea of it is to be an efficient and a kind of an effective public transport. My name is Ashley Norton and I'm a continuous improvement specialist for the Chief Mechanical Engineers Department here in Inchicore Works. At present, I am working here in the running shed. I'm out on the, the shop floor, making sure the exams are going to be completed on time, making sure that everything's safe for the staff. And then when I'm at the desk, my main role is production planning. So planning in the exams uh, and any casualty work and any modifications for the next day. I am aware of the minority of, of females in the mechanical engineering department. For new people joining Erin Road Erin, there's a lot of opportunities now for female staff and it's great to see the female apprentices and female graduate engineers uh, coming into the business and it's been really, really progressive in, in the last number of years. My name is Conor Murphy. I came here in 1959 to serve my time as an apprentice pattern maker and I was here from 1959 to 08. I have fantastic memories of here. 
the skills that were in each car was unbelievable. It's, you know, it's very hard to explain to people that's not uh, involved in the railway to explain what went on in here. It's unbelievable the amount of work that was done. You know, you could get anything made, anything, didn't matter what it was. In the Inchicore works, they had uh, camogie and football. They used to play it down in the field just outside the main gate. It was one of the years the camogie, the Dublin team, was comprised of COE employees. They represented Dublin one year for the All Ireland and they won it. And the famous Kathleen Mills was on that team. And I'm nearly 100% sure that she holds the record for the most medals for the one sport in All Ireland medals. My name is Michael Nugent. I retired in June 2007 as works manager for Intracore. The foundry behind us during the emergency cast grenades. And in this building, they filled them with explosives. Around 1916 in the War of Independence, the British Army got armoured cars built here. But there was also a strong IRA presence here during the War of Independence. And sabotage and stealing guns was, was the order of the day. In its long history, the works has been through the wars, with shells and grenade components turned out there on instructions of British forces during World War I. During the Easter Rising, the British were faced with fierce fighting in Dublin too. Many railway men, though, were actively involved in the struggle for independence too. Ireland's independence later on did not mean the end of problems at the works, with the civil war resulting in attacks on trains, bridges and buildings in an effort to hamper Free State Army troops. And of course, there were the dark days of World War II, where the works played a large role in the protection of neutral Ireland with creation and transport of military hardware. Thankfully, those days are well behind us. War or no war, the works had to do just that, work. While nowadays locomotives are no longer built here, they are still taken apart to be overhauled and repaired by the workers. Peter Smith, the chief mechanical engineer at the works, explains how much work is involved annually. This site actually is the, the main engineering facility. We are responsible for all of the rolling stock fleet and all of the trains uh, that operate on the Enrod Air network. So for the entire life of that train, which is typically 35 years, we will bring it into service, we will maintain it, uh, we will overhaul it, refurbish it uh, throughout that life. And this site uh, will do the entire vehicle uh, refurbishment or major components. So we actually make a lot of the components here on site even today. And the main trades that we would still have on, on site today would be people like electricians and, and fitters and uh, heavy vehicle mechanics, painters and welders. And they're the core trades that we would still employ today. Uh, we would of course have a lot of uh, professional engineers as well and uh, a lot of other support staff on site. My name's Orla O'Neill. For the last nine years, I've been attached to the training school here in Inchicore. My journey started with the company 20 years ago. I started on board the trains in the catering. I went from the catering to be a city gold hostess for a number of years, looking after our customers on board the trains. Working on board the trains is something that I really enjoyed, but it gave me a great platform to be able to share that experience with the trainees that come through our doors here in the training centre, because, you know, I, I've done it myself. I've been in the shoes that they've been in. The last nine years, I've been coming into a place where I've forged loads of new friendships. I've been able to get a degree and um, diplomas under my belt from an education perspective, so it's been great opportunities since I started here in the training centre. My name is Damien Mulhall. I'm a fitter in Air Road Air for the last 18 years. Currently, I'm working in the bogey shop in Inchicore. When I first came into the shop and I did hear bogey, I, as everyone is now, I hadn't got a clue what we're talking about. So a bogey is a frame that sits underneath the carriage, which carries the axles and motors, and obviously the brake calibers and so on. When you come into our shop, bogey would get washed first. It would then come in to be stripped. After it's stripped, it goes and get grip blasted. It would get MPI checked for any cracks or defects. It would be repaired if there's any defects found. It would then go through the spray boot. After it comes out of spray boot, it would then come out to us in the build section. We would build it from there with all new materials and then send it out the door.
Whilst maintaining and repairing the fleet is of huge importance, the fleet has to look good too, with the works housing the spray shop. Throughout the years, this spray shop has seen many colours and designs across freight and intercity trains, even those fit for kings and queens. Well, I work here in the paint shop. I started when I was 18 in 1996, and I served a four-year apprenticeship. I came into the paint shop in 1999, and I've worked in the paint shop ever since. From start to finish, it takes around 210 working hours for a train to be painted for one unit, from the part of the priming process straight through to the finishing. I'm Peter Rigney, I'm Carriage Officer of the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland here in Inchicore Works and this is in a way our prize uh, possession coach number 351. It was built here in Inchicore in 1906 for the visit of King Edward VI to Ireland in that year. Well it's got uh, two toilets which are done in Connemara marble and then three saloons, one of which is for smoking because in those days not only was there smoking there would have been uh, industrial scale smoking of cigars by the then King. The lamps in it are Waterford glass and the, the furniture is in hardwood. This is part of our industrial heritage um, and it's part of our built heritage. Not all built heritage is stone, some is, some is like this. And this is a classic example of Inchicore craftsmanship. For 175 years, the Inchicore works has survived in uncertain times, this past year included, and adapted so it has a place in Ireland's future. In Chicor, it's it's a great place to work because you're 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 seeing the history, but you're also working on the future. So the elements we're working on, you know, is, is the enhancement of the railway, and it's it's the future proofing, making a sustainable transport solutions for people. So the Capital Investments Department is based here in In Chicor. This is our main base while we're working all around the country on different projects. We have quite an exciting plan for our regional cities development, so we want to make sure that rail is at the heart of the, the transport plans in each of the regional cities of Cork, Limerick, Galway and Waterford. We also have our DART Plus programme, which is currently being planned. That will double the train capacity and treble the electrification on the Greater Dublin Area Rail Network. With such a large space that's home to some wildlife, the works is also playing a role in encouraging biodiversity and helping endangered pollinators. My name is Jane Ryan and I'm a graduate ecologist with Inroad Erin. Biodiversity in its simplest term, it's referring to species found throughout a wide range of habitats and it's referring to how they interact with those habitats and how changes can have implications for those species. Inroad Erin is a partner of the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan, which sets out aims and objectives to protect pollinators in Ireland. Um, I believe 30% of Irish bee species are threatened with extinction, so it's important to provide uh, habitats wherever we can, um, pollinator-friendly flowers and um, make sure we have areas left to nature. Throughout Inchicore there are opportunities to include wildlife as well, not just maintaining of the, the rolling stock and the engineering side of the house. Um, there's plenty of green areas and pollinator-friendly friendly plants that have been planted as well as the wildlife that occurs naturally within the wider area. Well, you've got lots of urban foxes around Inchicore and uh, especially with the, the beautiful houses approaching the, the main gate, they've got some beautiful gardens, so it's no wonder wildlife have come in and seen what the engineers have to offer. This year, we remember all the people who made Inchicore what it is today and thank those who continue to work here now. By ushering in the new generation of talent and moving the fleet to run on hybrid engines, the works is developing towards sustainable business and the future looks bright for the years to come.